Welcome to the Recruitment Mentors Podcast. My name is Hisham Azuz, and this is another 15 minutes with a mentor episode. And basically, in this series, we're going to ask mentors from inside the community seven questions in 15 minutes. I'm really excited to be joined by Mark Thomas. And before I ask you the first question, Mark, why don't you introduce yourself for those that may not know who you are, and we'll get into it. Cool. Yeah, cheers, Tisham. Uh, pleasure to be here. Um, so, yeah, I'm Mark Thomas. I uh, work for Eames Consulting, which are a uh, financial service and insurance predominantly specialist uh, recruitment brand based in London, uh, Hong Kong, Singapore. Um, and I'm the technology and change business with, uh, with a colleague of mine um, in, in predominantly a business development and sales focused kind of leadership role. Amazing. So first question, what was your biggest challenge in 2020? How did you overcome it and what did you learn from it? Um, so it'd be very easy to say COVID, which obviously was everyone's biggest challenge. But um, I think for me, so, so a bit of context. So before I joined Eames, I worked at like a technology recruitment business for 10 years and, and, and ended up running that for a couple of years and then ended up moving on from there. Uh, just just over two years ago, so twenty uh, sorry two thousand and nineteen January. So and I joined Eames in order to to run technology for them, but also to uh, start up a regional office. So uh, I I don't live in London. I live in uh, like a small village out out towards Swindon Way. Um, and so we planned to set up an office in Reading, which we did. So we we set that up in at the start of two thousand nineteen, so two years ago. Um, and and over the whole of 2019, I built that that office up um, to the point we had I think seven eight people. We're going, everything was going really well. We had a really like nice devised plan for for the next few years. Um, to start of 2020 with a bang, everything was going really well. And then obviously COVID hit, and everyone was working from home. Um, most of the people I had working for me had only been working for me for six to 12 months some some uh, literally a couple of like a month or so something i think a couple three or four of them had started in january that that year so they'd literally been with me for no time and suddenly we're all working from home um so really the hardest thing was you I mean ultimately went through a process to the point where we me and the leadership team at eames thought about what, what we actually needed and, and given that we were going to be working from home in the future state um probably do you know i mean half the time at least did we need a regional office? So ultimately that meant that very quickly we needed to let some people go. Well, two people had only been with me for a matter of weeks. So so we, we, we let them go because they were just going to be a cost. And um, so that was tough, like having to let people go who'd quit, quit a job to come and work for you. You've told them yeah. during and you, and you have to let them go because not because they're not they're not good, but because they're they just they just don't have uh, they're not going to make any money. They're just going to suck money out of the resources. For, for a couple of months and then and then all, latterly to make the decision to actually close the reading office um so yeah pr pretty tough in like of, of, of all the things i've done in recruitment let, letting people that we didn't actually let any of those people go we we actually gave them the opportunity to work in london and be based from home uh, part-time but naturally some of those people didn't want to travel to london etc cetera, etc cetera. so i mean look what what did i learn from it is no matter how good your plan is, <laughs> something like COVID can come along and, and, and completely ruin it all, right? So um, I think the most important thing is, yeah, it's great to have a plan and great to have a long-term plan, but you've got to be agile enough to be able to pivot and change change and adapt and, and adapt quickly. And the one thing I can say Eames did brilliantly is they, uh, as a business, we made decisions really quickly and some people thought they were a bit uh, hasty, but but actually I think we we made good decisions really quickly and it, it, it made it made actually us in a pretty good state now we've made a profit every month since so it's 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 been okay um but yeah, yeah. i can't say it wasn't tough thank you for sharing that um so next one interested to hear this from you so what working from home tip could you share with other recruiters listening to this that has had a massive impact on your own productivity yeah, so uh, working from home, like I wasn't a work from home person at all before this. I'd probably count on one hand how many days I've worked from home in 12, 13 years. Like I, just, I, 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 I hated it. I've, I've kind of grown to, to quite enjoy it. Um, I think the most important thing about working from home for me is is having structure, like have, having, a, having a plan. Like I always get up 
shower, get ready for work as though I was as though I was going to work in the office and and spend time sat like in the office, have lunch breaks. Um, I, I've just kind of got my by my wife pestering me is I've managed to like start going for a walk every lunchtime. It means I've got some structure to my day, a bit like what I would have if I was in London. I would go out at lunchtime, go for a walk, get some lunch or something like that. Um, so for me, that's the most important part. Like that's the, been the change for me. Now I've got a structure and structure it very similarly to I am in work. It, it makes it a bit easier. I think if you don't have that, you can easily just become a bit demotivated and just not not focus on what what you what you need to do and activities you need to do each day and stuff like that. Yeah, absolutely. I definitely agree with you on that. And I know there'll be different sort of channels that you use, but from your own experience, what's been the most effective way for you to win business in the last twelve months? Would you say? um so, so i i kind of break the mold a little bit on this so like, I, I am i am i am i'm certainly not against cold calling and, and, and being on the phone but i also think that they're i think recruitment people in recruitment get a, a little bit too bogged down on that there, there's multiple ways of winning clients and some people are great at sending brilliant emails and winning clients that way and getting people on the phone that way I, i've been quite good at that in, in the past but you mean in the last 12 months the most important thing that's come to home to roost for me is the fact that i spent 13 years building relationships with people and actually those relationships really come to come to the, the the forefront when 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 times are tough so you can pick up the phone and speak to people um th there's a there's a lot of recruiters and I, i've seen a lot of them that are quite a few some have worked for me that, that that have a very short time term mindset so they they only really want they and and that's partly driven by the way our industry is like they, they, they everyone's looking for the next fee um and so therefore if a someone a senior person who's not relevant for a role that you're working you don't speak to them because they're not going to provide you with, with cash in the bank right then but actually you've kind of got to think of the long-term compound effect of speaking to that many people do you know what i mean so my my attitude has always been speak to as many people as possible they may not pay 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 uh Give you an invoice or pay pay any money to you right now but but longer term people remember those 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 kind of relationships and those, those not that long-term mindset so for me that that in the last 12 months that's 100 percent been been what's what's paid dividends to me people who i've worked with before who remember me i've done good work for you can go back and revisit not always the same but necessarily if you're new into the job but start you, there's always a good time to start right yeah no i, I really like that so interested to hear this from you what what habit or hobby did you start in 2020 that you're going to continue in 2021 uh so, so i probably just answered it. it's, it's it's walking like if you if you ask anyone that knows me i i, I just i don't walk anywhere like i, I get there i spend I, I'm, I'm apart from around the golf course um so my my, my missus would have asked me about 100 times to go for a walk at lunchtime and stuff like that and i just i just didn't do it i hated it i hated every minute of it um but I found that in lockdown, one of the things I was doing when I didn't have structures, I was getting to the end of like a Thursday and I'd not been out of the house for like four days or something like that. So um, so because I'm working from home, I just like my commute was about five yards from the from the, the bedroom to the to the office. So um, so that's the one thing I've started doing and, and I've got kind of quite into counting how many steps I do and and, do, and making sure I do like regular activity and stuff like that. So. So yeah, I probably begrudgingly, I'll, I'll probably carry on doing it. In fairness, I quite, <laughs> quite quite enjoyed it, getting a bit of fresh air and stuff. Love that. So, which do you think is better, the first coffee in the morning or the first pint post work on a Friday? I don't drink coffee, so it's an easy, it's very <laughs> oh. easy. <laughs> So yeah, I don't, I don't drink coffee. I'm not really allowed. It doesn't really agree with me caffeine. So, um, so yeah, and I, but even if it was, even if I did, did drink coffee, it would definitely be the point. Fair. Right. So the next next one is is slightly different. It's it's more of a scenario, and I want for sort of to hear how you how you'd approach it. So a particular business that you've that you've had on your sort of target target client list for over a year or a long period of time. You've had a couple of touch points with different people, different hiring managers over that time at this business from, I don't know, some of them might have engaged with some of your content on LinkedIn. You might send a couple of emails, but through your candidate network, you managed to get one of their, their contact numbers, one of the hiring managers, and you call that person. They pick up the answer. They say, hello, who is this? And I want to hear sort of what you'd say or, or how you'd approach it. <laughs> right. Okay. So, um, so I've never spoke to this person before. 
No, but they may have seen your name, like they, you, they may have engaged with some of your content or like you may have ended up in their inbox at some point. Like there's definitely been touch points for sure. Yeah. So uh, for me, like, it's funny, I was talking to this about uh, for our, uh, our head of training this morning. But um, for me, what I would do and what I've always done in this is, is try to build some kind of rapport. Like, and, and, there's, and, and actually a lot of people talk about how you do this. And I've had consultants ask me before and, and it's really hard to teach. But and, and actually, the, 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 I think the thing people mistake, uh, get wrong, is is that they uh, they try to tell them what things to build rapport on, and, and that's that's not the right thing to do. It's what's most important for me is to understand what you're interested in, um, and and make that something that someone else could be interested in as well. Find common ground. So obviously, I would intro with with what I was doing. I I, I certainly wouldn't go into some big long spiel about what Eames do and, and stuff like that because frank, frankly, I just don't think people really care about that. Like the, you, you, they ultimately really want to why they're talking to you who you are and, and and if you are going to talk to them, what value they've got of spending this time to speak to you so um if they're aware of me it makes it a bit easier because you 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 therefore can de- you hopefully have got some kind of banked rapport already because they know you a bit but i, I always try to find some common ground so like, i i think i just mentioned to you before we were on i've got a nine-month-old baby which is a pretty good way to build 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 some kind of rapport with someone if someone else has got a kid they know what it's like to have a nine month old baby, but it's not easy. So, especially if it's your first one. So I think for me, I use things like I play a lot of golf. I use golf a lot as a, as a way to, to people to talk about blokes who play golf, love talking about golf and sport <laughs> in general. Um, and, and, and just try to find common ground. I mean, obviously even like, I mean, you can use coronavirus and how I think I said to you, like how, how is, uh, how is lockdown treating you or something like that before we went on? That's it's a pretty good way of building some rapport. So that would always be my, in, that would always be my, my starting point to try and break down some barriers. Um, I think then latterly, I, I then try and try and turn that into a as much of a two way conversation as possible. So I, I don't really see client calls and candidate calls as separate. I think that's another mistake recruiters make. Every mm. can, candidate and every client is potentially the opposite. So I, I and and it's amazing how many times I I've got clients off the fat back of speaking to people who were thought they were a candidate. So. I would I would actually enter the conversation and just trying to find out where they're at at the at the moment. So, are they hiring? Do do they do what What are their problems at the moment? And that might be that they're looking for a job. If so, it might mean that the first call that I have with them, I end up talking to them about what they're looking for um, and 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 what job they they might be interested in. I don't actually even get to the point where I even make a sell um, because actually sometimes you're better off leaving that. So. Um, so it'd be a load of fact finding, and th- and then at that point you n- you need to make a call. And, and again, the biggest mistake I think people make is that they go for the close too soon. Like they they, mm. they they have a really good call with someone, and they turn it into an awkward call by trying to close them. When actually you're better off leaving them with a great experience. They've just met a guy who plays golf, who's got kids that they really enjoy speaking to, and actually that who, who who might help them find a job, and actually just leave it as that and revisit it again next week. Does that yeah, make sense? No. Yeah, yeah, no, that, that's, yeah, really, you went on some interesting things there. So thank you. So last question. So sort of final question really is basically, I want you to sort of imagine that I'm a recruiter who's, I've set my goals for 2021. I'm hoping to have a more successful 2021 and I've written down my goals. I'm, I'm feeling motivated. And I guess what I sort of just want to, I'd be interested to hear from you is like, what would your advice be to me? that you think would give me the best possible chance of actually achieving my goals? So I think, so I think for me, it's, it's, it's about breaking them down. So like lots of people at the start of the year focus on this really big kind of goal that they've got for, for, for 2021 or whatever the year would be. And and it's, it's, it's kind of, it's good to have, but it's kind of unachievable. So it goes back to a little bit, like I, I like to structure I have kind of daily activities that I absolutely must do, no matter what what happens, and I structure them into my day. So, for example, I always, always, without fail, uh, without fails, um, send five business development emails every single day, and they normally be be identified from a um, from leads that I've got the previous day or people I've looked at. That's just one example, but. I think what you, you need to come up whatever that big goal is, work backwards and figure out what you need to do weekly, monthly, and, and then factor it into that and focus on the week. Focus on, on, on having a, a, a 100% achievable week because if you focus too much on the goal, you'll either lose track of it and it'll become unrealistic very quickly 
or or you'll backload it and, and really not worry about it till you get to the end of the year and then it's too late. So I think you need to break it down. I would I would suggest weekly and daily is the is the way to do it. Um and, and have that all those numbers figure up feed into the thing. It's a bit of an old school recruitment method, right? Work work backwards if you need to do figure out how many sales calls you need to do to get X number and work work backwards from there. But it works. It works for me 100 percent If I don't have a day plan and a structure and know what good looks like for a day or a week, then you've got no chance of of, of, of achieving the the annual one because it's just too much of a bigger target. Yeah. Great. Mark, that was it. 50 minutes of a mentor. Yeah. Nailed it. Thank you so much. No worries. Pleasure. <laughs>